The following episode is all about you and your pretty beautiful selves. There's no content warning in this one because I'm not killing anybody at all or getting anybody's balls licked. So be free, be fun and listen to your own validation. Welcome to the first episode of, no, it's not the first episode, it's welcome to the first validation episode of In the Memory of the Goldfish Bitches. I am so happy today for no good reason, to be honest. And like, before recording this episode, I was talking to my mom and my throat suddenly decided, no, bitch, you cannot speak. And I was like, bitch, fuck you too. I'm going to speak and there's no way that you can stop me. So we are recording this episode. And if tomorrow I'm not able to speak and not able to record the 14th episode, it's all on you guys. Okay. Yeah. So welcome to the first validate listeners validation episode of in the memory of the goldfish so today's uh, today's all about you and it's gonna have golden goldfishes or the goldfishes of the month i'm not quite sure what sh- what i'm gonna call you guys i do not know why i'm switching between accents today um uh, and so basically these the goldfishes of the month or the golden goldfishes are the people who have caught my eye or caught my attention or gave me attention so this time i'm gonna give you guys the attention which you i know you love it because you love me all right so today we actually got a real story from somebody which i was absolutely not expecting and this person though their mail was absolutely amazing they gave me the right to rewrite their reality so here we go so i have named their story as shelter and the date that i've given is 12th november 2019 the time is 1836 or for the uneducated people out there 6 6 36 in the evening you know, um, the square of six is 36, so it's kind of a synchronicity. And guys, with this, Plutus walks into the room, so please, please, please do not complain for any kind of sounds and such from this point on. Okay, I continue with the story. I run my hands across the damask which lies on which lies my bitter tea. Do you know what a damask is? I do not. I've written the story, but I do not remember what a damask is. Let me Google it up. Let me, let me, let me. Um, nom, nom, nom. The mask is basically one of those um, Victorian patterns that you observe on the walls. I have no idea why it's written here, but it is. Okay. I continued uh, reading. It's all a rather cozy setup I've created for me. The upholstery, the carpets, the drapes, the golden and teal china, the teak, the small tea room, one small chamber, a wardrobe-sized toilet, my little Buckingham palace. I have been waiting for my eldest son to call me back in quotations, uh, to, to call to call me back in five for last 157 hours 36 minutes either he has forgotten i exist or forgotten to exist himself an abscounder like his father you know this specific line is something that my french teacher once told me i was talking with her and she asked me about my father and i said that he has been at work for about a week like we Complete, like it's a long story and i really do not think i can give out that information as such uh, so he, he like he, we have multiple houses so he stays at the house which is closer to his work when he needs to so she's like yeah even my husband wants that all these men they just know one they just know one proper thing that is how to run away and i was like damn bitch who hurt you so i love you my beautiful amazing professor if you listening to this but she was a very nice person she is a very nice person anyway there is a park at the 
park at the crossroads. Park. What the fuck's wrong with you, Koi? The ones I planned when I was the pillar of this community. I grabbed the cane the older couple on the street gave me. It is tacky, but the smile when I use it. Why not? I cross their house. They don't seem to be sitting out on the porch. I was crossing the road as I was seeing a little child eating chocolate like a gorilla. Children are so idiotic. Like, that's a comment. There were bright lights, bright sounds, glum people and an icy cold body. Warm flowing blood. No, I do not regret what happened. I hope she killed the fucking child. What good will that do? I am making the blood flow in me, consciously, with their foot. I am making sure my ears hear. Is hear. They hear that my brain tries to register. My muscles are relaxing. My jaw unclenches. I never knew this is how a relaxed jaw felt like. You know, whenever in these meditations, like, now your jaw is relaxing. And I'm like, yeah, why? How? How does the jaw relax without opening my mouth? This relaxation and me unable to control. I continue with the story, by the way, now. Um, <laughs> this relaxation and me unable to control all the stimulus in my body. It feels as though I'm being rushed out of my own home. As if... I forgot to pay the electric bills and there's a cut and I have a half pie and I have a pie half baked for my son. He wouldn't appreciate unbaked pies. Goes the son slash son hyphen. I do not know what people call that thingy. S-U-N the thingy S-O-N like any can be used multiple choice question. Goes the son goes the pie. Goes my half-baked pies. Yep. Now, it's 14th November 2019 and the time is... Okay. Oh, I forgot I can speak like this. I should probably not in the podcast. Actually, um, a lot of my cats here are like no, stuck on my beard. If you can call what I have a beard and my nose. So they were entering my nose and I started to speak like this. I grabbed hold of my nose. So I forgot I could do this and this could be really irritating for you guys. <laughs> okay. So the next time stamp that time stamp that I've given is 14th November 2019. The time is 2013. That is two days after the previous incident of the half-baked pies. It was about 15 minutes back that she asked me for a little warm water as her throat she felt was getting sore, bitch same. And our fathers had and our father had this obsession with warm water which got passed on to her and that she feels hot water cures everything. I was working, I had assignments to do, I had a life, you know. I'm not a play thing. Something I feel most people are not able to wrap their heads around. I could hear her walking down the stairs, her footsteps right above me. She shouted, Your fat ass may know me not move anymore. I am gonna go get my own stuff. Why am I acting like this today? Um, shoot me a DM to know more. <laughs> um, she says, I was kind of relieved, but knew this is somewhere within uh, this is somewhere within me that 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 unsupportable wench cannot go this easy. As I was starting to get, uh, as I was staring at the underside of the staircase, right in front of me, there was a little crack. I put my laptop on a side, balanced it against the wall, and got on my knees. Being intrigued by the existence of the crack, I started to poke my pen into the crack, widening it just a little bit more, each circle at a time. The sound it made was almost orgasmic, 
Wherever there are children, there needs to be masturbation. Wherever there is masturbation, there is orgasms because sex really gets orgasm, especially when it comes to cis straight men because they really don't know what to what they are doing when they are doing it, and. This kind of violates my initial content warning. I was not supposed to have any balls being licked in this time because it's your balls, and since you have not given me the consent to lick your balls, so I cannot really do that. I I really hope nobody listens to this podcast. Um, okay, so the child is having an org- orgasm by fingering a crack in the wall with his pen. Fun. You flabbergasting idiot! My meditative state was disturbed by the vengeous roar, as it, as I was turning back to look at her, her cup came flying towards me. The stark green color made me almost tortured, but hit, it hit the underside. It broke. The boiling hot water fell on my neck, the right, the right side, the upper back, and the water made all the pillows and the foam in my dome wet. How dare she take away my sacred space? I couldn't see her eyes; they must be ugly. I looked at the floor, slipped into my shoes in a fairly sloppy manner, and walked out. I like this child, not child, whatever. Like I kind of also relate to it, though. Like I've never been assaulted in this manner, but like you know how it's like I'm annoyed, but I still am wearing my shoes in a very sloppy manner. So, well, whatever, and walked out. I went out. The roads around me were wider than they needed to be, and they were more crowded and louder than they needed to be. I was walking to my crossroads, where three of them led to no, uh, where where the three of them really led to, led to nowhere. Nobody really came there. It was just a sorry place for off crossing paths. The roads wider than needed, but as quiet as the heavens. I was marching towards there. The breeze was drying my clothes, tickling the red skin, my now red skin. I could see a shadow moving around mine. It felt as if I had two shadows. It must be the street lights. I have played so much with this. Whenever you walk in a street and there's like lights on one side, so when you are like in middle of the of two poles, you end up getting like two shadows. And if you, in some specific placements, you can get like three or four shadows, and it's like very fun. It feels like you are you have a spotlight on you or something. Okay. Um, 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 where am I? Where am I? As I was alone. As though, should I start a career in singing, like an opera singer now? I should. Um, I it felt as though me registering her existence had set winds into motion. Bit no, okay, yeah. I I where is where was I? Yes, I was here. Ignore what I just said. I reached my crossroads. There were no lights there. Not usually. There was a lot of noise here. A couple days back, when some woman kicked the rocker, other, other than other than perhaps here, other than her, here, perhaps I was alone. I felt as though that me registering her existence set the winds into motion. I liked it. It caressed me. It soothed me. I also realized I also killed somebody in the episode, so basically I should have given a proper content warning. Fuck. I do not know how much time I spent there, crouched down in the middle of the crossroads. When I went back, the lights of most of the house were off. To my surprise, the door was locked too. I didn't know. I, I'm sorry for the break in between. I. Think I should address that. Uh, whenever I read Crossroads, I keep on thinking about Hecate, and when it comes to thinking about Hecate, some more interesting thing things fall into line. Oh my God! This gave me the idea of my out of the blue for tomorrow. I'm, let me write it down. Uh, um. Yeah. Okay. Fun. Talk about making an 
like an impromptu to episode right with you guys you are a part of a process now how validated can you feel you have heard me basically think about what's going to be the next episode anyway i do not know how much time i spend there crouched down in the middle of the crossroads when i walked back the lights of most of the house were off to my surprise the door was locked too i did not know that there was such i did not know such things existed in our house the locked doors i didn't want to call the winch i'd rather sleep on the crossroads the locked open up from the inside the god of the house didn't want the lock doors locked it seemed i don't know why i thought of this i felt a sigh coming out of me 14th november 2019 time 21 hours 18 minutes it was 20 hours 13 minutes so about an hour has passed since the child was assaulted when he was just peacefully fingering cracks at the underside of the staircase nothing creepy it feels like he saw me nobody has done that i wanted to see him more maybe that would help help me stay and see my son the door to his house was locked he used very religious vocabulary and i opened it up for him he didn't thank me i was attached to him it seems um so for context people this time stamp change basically is a change of perspective as well now i remember the story properly and i was so pro- i am still very proud of me for writing this it's not been very long that i wrote this but whatever um so this is basically the perspective of the woman who died at the crossroads where the child just went down to sit at okay so um i followed him i continued reading i followed him to his room where he started to strip himself bare heart his tee had yellowed patches under his underarms this child should be more careful than that He tossed it behind him landing at my feet. It smelled worse than cat urine. <laughs> I know children smell so bad. Oh my god. In the mirror he saw me making a nasty face at his habits. If you wish to find a place to live you can come live in my scar. he said as he touched the red patch near his neck i do not know why i couldn't refuse i touched his scar it felt awkward yes woman it would feel awkward if you touch a scar of a naked child who's looking at you in the mirror pedo file um 14th november 2019 21 hours 27 minutes she touches my neck as if she wished to see if i actually existed she made fun faces of appreciation as she was looking at my body i love this child so validating maybe i seemed to her like her husband when she touched me i felt myself open up no child you do not wish to open yourself up to a ghost no nope, you do not want them to enter in you in any way whatsoever it won't be a comfortable feeling i'm not speaking from experience catching um she glued her existence onto mine the it that must have hurt hurt <laughs> gluing your existence fuck the red sea red skin seemed to have turned into a continent on which she would want to rule on the ocean uh, on the she would want to rule am surrounded by the ocean of my skin V for V, us for us, we are ours, us is ours. We both said in unis- unison. We both knew she found her bachelor self, and I found my crown. Yeah. So yeah, that is it for the story. I hope it was not a very difficult read. And so, to the um. Uh, the email oh my god i'm so happy i'm finally reading a fan mail fuck i have never been more happy in my life 
I'm not kidding. And I've had many reasons to be happy. I'm basically an uh, 11 soul half celestial who have conquered half the world, people. So this, um, the subject is my story for the listener's validation. Um, since the person, they asked me to use an alias for them. Um, so I would call them John or JS. And they would obviously be the first goldfish of the month slash golden goldfish so this i start reading wait a second is there anything that else they said anything else that they else said what the fuck okay and they wanted me to read the mail as it is in the episode which i would have anyway done but okay sorry so he writes or they write, since they did not mention their pronouns. Hi Koi, I hope you find this well and in good health. Before any fan moment or anything, how are you Koi? Well, I am happy today. And how's Plutus? He's sleeping just beside me. I suppose he's licking his balls while you're reading this email. Actually, no, today he's sleeping under the... Uh, I bought a little... Um, bed table thing so he really likes that as a shelter so he like gets in under it and goes to sleep it's cute um i think he continues right i think i won't like add in my comments in it i'm just gonna read it as it is to the extent that i can okay i think i'll be getting a pet will uh, as well soon it will be a dog if i get it anyway time for the fan moment we've all been waiting for that I've heard every episode of your podcast. Legit every episode was a journey for me. I just heard, heard your new episode called Dirt. I loved it. However, my favorite episode is Procession and my favorite true crime episode is Tippity Tippity Tap. And the thing that I liked about the episode the most is that you provided links for the women who might have suffered through the same. Thank you so much. Somebody finally saw that. Oh my God, I love you. JC, marry me already. I truly respect you for that. Anyway, I cannot make this email all about the fan moment, can I? No, you can seriously make all emails about the fan moment. I want to be in such good mood each time I record an episode. I'm not kidding. Um, starting the next paragraph, I'll start my story and try to ask, add as many details as possible. I wish it gets selected for the listeners episode. Yes, honey, it obviously got selected. It was so well written. And yep, there can be some silly mistakes in it. Please forgive me for that in advance. Of course not. I'm not a good grammatical person myself. Um, so the entire story is in quotes. So I'm going to say quote and unquote because that would make me sound fancy. Should I do that in my proper, proper what is this, podcast too? I should. Taking notes from you, John. Quote. It's a pleasant day of autumn and the sun is about to set. Living in a city like Austin, you can't stay at home for too long, you know. Family and all is cool, but they suck the life out of me. Some, out of you sometimes. I hope it's just not me. Also, it's not. They suck the living existence out of everybody, I sometimes feel. And it's fine to put your family in the grey area if anybody's listening to this. Yeah, uh, yeah. of course everybody's listening to this, like all the entire world's population is. Fuck. I hope it's just not me. Unquote. Quote. Sorry. Also, it's been eight months since COVID-19 shit started. I'll say I did a lot in it. But staying at home... 24-7 with your family was such a drag. I wish to go out, but due to this shit, uh, due to COVID-19 shit, I'm restricted to go out at this time. But the weather is so cool outside. I wanna go, I wanna go out. So what to do now? How will my crazy mother let me go out? I think. I need to have a fight in order to escape. So Unquote. This is from where the fight was inspired in the story. Quote. Now this is kind of boring. Um, so I fight 
in order to go out and I win. She's always. Mother thinks she's so clever, but she's as gullible as ever. I love her. I love how he called, how they call their mother, uh, their mother, mother. Like normally people like ma'am. And he's like mother. So indifferent. Me liking. I'm sorry, I really don't want to pet anybody against their parents. Um, so I'm out now, finally. Feeling the cool breeze on my face, always the best feeling ever. I put on the songs, I'm walking and having the time of my life. While listening to my favorite song, A Forgiven, Unforgiven 3 by Metallica, I reach a memorable crossroad. As I crossed that crossroad, I started to have a strange feeling that I was be, uh, a strange feeling. I feel like I'm being followed. I see behind me, but there's no one. I'm confused what's going on above that. The last verse of Unforgiven 3 is playing and I'm feeling more and more terrified. I have not heard this song properly. I started to, but then I was not able to kind of, I have no idea. I like the, my personal remark on that. Continuing with his e their email, I feel like I need to talk to a witch friend of mine. I can't tell him his. I can't tell his real name, so let's call him Mark for the ease of conversation. I wanna call him, but he strictly said that he was busy at the time, so I cannot call him boundaries, bitch. I feel like I'm about to die. No, we don't really need these strong boundaries, Mark. Um, continuing with the email. I decide to go back to my home, sweet home, sweet, the blessed, best place in the whole fucking world, to my dear and loving mother and my sweetest family. I start, I swear I'm not adding anything in the entire, the list of things he's written, he has written it so well. I am just absolutely enjoying this. I enjoyed reading this mail. I'm not kidding. You guys should send more mails. Um, I start to go back and when I change my direction, I see a dark figure and I jump back to get to my toes. I get shiver through my spines and I feel like this, that is, that is it. Then I see it carefully. It was my shadow in capitals, my fucking shadow. I feel really stupid to have to fear my shadow, but still, it seemed darker than it used to. Now I'm completely terrified. When I started walking from my house, the distant fi distance felt like nothing. Now it seems that I need to cross mountains to reach my home. I stopped the music and started walking. I somehow reached my house and took a sigh of relief. I feel fine now. I feel like nothing really happened. I was afraid for no reason. Now it's the night of the same day. I'm doing my daily, daily chores, planning to sleep sooner than before. Suddenly, I feel that presence again. Now I'm very, very terrified. And the fact that I'm in the house that still feels as the presence is bugging me more than anything. Mark still didn't wish to talk to me, but fuck Mark. I'll call that motherfucker now. He picks up. Okay, I do not use the motherfucker abuse at all because I absolutely hate it and find it derogatory and nobody should absolutely use that, but I am reading the male verb at him. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Before somebody starts to scream at me, that is. Go scream at JC. I get why this guy did not want me to use the proper name. Smart, smart, smart. He picks up the call and he's weirdly calm about it. I think he sensed I needed him. I'm telling him all about what happened in the evening and I'm all panicked. And in his calm voice, he says, calm your tits. I don't know, but that shit was weirdly helpful. Then he asks me to sit down and asks, tell me, how are you feeling? I say, I feel like I'm about to die now. I feel like death is all around me. Sounds pretty bullshit reading it now, but that's how I really felt. He asks me to stand up and ask if there's 
uh, if there's a part in my room where three or more ways go or intersect. I stand there, he says, okay, so close your eyes now and tell me what do you see right now. I close my eyes, I see someone, who's she, I do not know. I've seen her somewhere, she's too old. Wrinkles all over her face, kind of like my grandmother, but not her. Unquote. Um, this is the crone thingy, all right. And grandmother, I, I think John's a young kid from what I can, like I'm 19 too, but John feels younger from what I can read. Anyway, continuing. In capitals, who is this woman? Now I open my eyes, sit down and start explaining to Mark what I saw. He says calmly, he calmly says, all right, how the hell can he be so calm? He writes in um, uppercase. Then he says, she's a spirit who's observing you. She wants to see you happy, that's all. That's all? That's a fucking weird way to see someone happy, to terrify the living shit out of somebody. If I forgot to mention before, I have a keen interest in psychology and I was... Yes, you forgot to mention it before, John. Um, that I have researched about recipe of happinesses about that time. Mark says, most probably she wants your recipe of happiness. What do you say? There's some random noises outside. I'm not sure if it's a cat or bat. You know, there's so many bats in my locality recently and I'm like, ooh, vampire Dracula. Continuing with the mail. Um, if I for, um, Max says, she most probably wants your recipe for happiness. What do you say? If, again, I forgot to mention, yes, you didn't, Mark. I am a tarot card reader as well. Um, you know, John, you should you should not have asked me to conceal your identity. This could have gotten you a lot of press and people to do your tarot card readings, you know. Um, I'm basically the most famous podcast in the universe, in case you did not notice yet. Mark again says, now she's in front of you. If you want to feel her, dogs are barking. If you want to feel her, you can. If you want to feel her, if you want to talk to her, you can. You know, um, talking about Crohn's, um, Hecate, Crohn self, she is usually identified by barking dogs and such. And there are like a lot of black dogs near me and they're all barking. So something's up. And it's a full moon today, I think. Um, as terrified as I was, I refused to have any kind of conversation. Now, Mark again says, she's, she'd like to stay with you. You can allocate her tarot card of yours. I suggest you do that. Without thinking about it much, I said, the lover's card. After 10 seconds of it, I'm rethinking my decision and so, no, I'd like to change it, but Mark says, too late now. She's already in her lover's card. I'm thinking, all right, whatever suits her the best. Now, I don't feel the presence anymore. I feel more alive. Now I ask her who she, and he says, she was the crone. Crone, me being a noob in this, I asked him, what does this mean? Mark, being a bitch, says, Google is your best friend. Me, wanting to kill him, says, all right, I'll, you should write a telenovela, Monsieur John. Then I like, uh, then I feel like talking to that spirit weirdly. Max says, now I can't help you with it. She's in your cards. So go ask your goddamn cards. After all, we talked after this, we talked for hardly two minutes and he cut the call. Me being a lazy ass decided to deal with this the day after and goes to sleep. Waking up, I googled and searched crone. And the first image which showed up was the exact representation of what I saw when I closed my eyes. I was surprised. I go to my tarot cards and try talking to her. I was so amazed by the fact that a supernatural folklore creature was living in my cards now. 
Woohoo! He says, and he ends the quotes to his stories. I'm getting goosebumps here. I I have no idea. Why am I even getting goosebumps for no good reason today? So that's the story. I know it's pretty big, and I added too many unnecessary details. We love unnecessary details, John. Add as many as you want to talk. Tell me more about your mother. I'll I'd love to bitch about her. But this incident is too close to my heart that I couldn't settle for fewer details. I'd like to. S- I'd like you to see make uh to, you to see make a gr- they, what I'd like to see you make a great story about it. Sorry, he wrote it properly. I couldn't read it properly. I know you'll do a great job. Thank you for putting your trust in me, John. I hope that I actually did just justice to the entire thing. I'm sorry if I did not, and if it was um wrong. And I'd like to. I'd like. you to keep my name blah 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 you may read this mail as it is in the episode which i did give my regards to plutus best john i love you john yep so that that was it guys that was it for the story and the listeners mention and the validation and you know everything now the thing that everybody has been waiting for is the golden goldfish or or the goldfish of the month whatever we want to call it so um so we have five goldfishes i think like i'll count them if it's like four please do not kill me so in no particular order it's john mr poopy butthole anshata malik pranav kelkar and andy ru yay guys you are validated yeah yeah hi <laughs> i hope you did not stop listening to the podcast after my validation song but i really 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 appreciate each and every one of you so why these five people in specific john because do he sent like such an amazing story and mr poopy but whole it's a second time starring in the podcast because of his name that's a name that catches attention anshita is happens to be also somebody who has listened listened to all of my episodes and responded to the story that i put out on instagram and she also happens to be a friend in college and um she did not know that i was her classmate and she knew me as koi and one fine day i we call, i called her up because of an assignment that we were supposed to do and she went into kind of like a pause and she like what the fuck is this koi and so it was a very big fan reveal kind of moment for me and i'm like oh my god i'm so famous um so that's about anshita um pranav is a good friend of mine who also responded to the story saying that he's listened to all the episodes so thank you so much human being you are adorable amazing and andy ru actually is a podcaster herself i heard one of her episodes she's she has only released one episode which is absolutely fucking lutely amazing guys you should totally check it out it's called more than one thing hashtag #mtot and it's there on cast box where I was able to find Andy Roop like cap and it's an amazing episode i am not kidding i love it give us a a show us some support if we want the pod, her podcast to grow okay and um that's about her and her comment was also the most famous comment like on my profile yet so there's that so she is a very famous amazing person so kind of me trying to sneak into her good books which i should not have prob- probably said that but whatever and poopy but whole apart from his name his um comment is the second most trending comment if that's a thing so yep that's about it guys that's it for the listeners validation episode the very first one and i am glad that we did it so the podcast is hosted by koyonir it's co-produced with netflix the music is by lil adi you can reach out to me on koy on air on adrit koyonir on instagram and twitter and i would love to hear from you slide into my dms be horny up <laughs> fuck don't be horny i mean be whatever you want to be okay and because that's your right you can mail me your own listeners validation episode stories on koi@theratemadebynefix.com 
you and the next episode is gonna be on the 29th of the next month that is may may april that is gonna be april and i'll be looking forward to hearing from you all and bye bye alligators